So you're saying that the script is on this piece of paper and not the memory card? Thanks for fishing this out of the trash for me. We can trace simple substitution ciphers in various forms back at least 2,000 years. The Caesar shift cipher is a very simple form of substitution, as is the pig pen or Freemason cipher. At least one researcher has argued that the Knights Templar used a form of pig pen during the Christian Crusades in the 1100s. However, the origins of the simple sub can be traced back farther to the Hebrew Atbash cipher, which shows up in the Old Testament in the books of Jeremiah and Exodus. From this, we can break simple sub into symbolic and alphabetic types. Alphabetic can be further separated into with and without word divisions, or in the ACA or American Cryptogram Association terminology, aristocrats and patristocrats. Patristocrats. The ACA is not a sponsor. Link in the description. I'll meet you in the training room. Patristocrats. Patristocrats. As mentioned in the intro, we can treat simple substitution ciphers as symbolic, that is, using pictures or symbols to represent the letters of our plain text, or alphabetic, where each letter is replaced by some other letter. Famous examples of symbolic ciphers are Poe's gold bug, Doyle's dancing men, and pig pen. Alphabetic subs, conversely, can be found in the comic sections of some newspapers and used to be on the backs of cereal boxes. Symbolic subs are by their nature randomly assigned. There's no real attempt to create a keyed alphabetic pattern to match letters to the symbols. Alphabetic subs, though, can be random or keyed. Random alphabets are created as the name implies. We start out by writing out the plain text alphabet in ascending order. By convention, the plain text alphabet is lowercase. Then we randomly assign the cipher alphabet letters to the plain text alphabet using uppercase by convention. From here, encryption of the plain text message works the same as for Caesar shift. Find the plain text letter in the upper line of the alphabet pair and take off the cipher text letter below it from the lower line. This is a test becomes C R T D T D Z C X D C. There are a few drawbacks to random alphabets. First, they're impossible to remember in the field, so the sender and recipient must keep printed copies around somewhere, which can be discovered by outsiders. Second, they're not quite as much fun to solve if you like recovering the keywords from the alphabets. Third, it's harder for the hobbyist solver to tell if they've fully solved shorter messages that don't use all of the letters in the alphabet. We'll come back to this issue later. This brings us to keyed alphabets. I've mentioned them before, both in the basics video and in the fixed distance transposition video for K3 keyword recovery. Using the ACA terminology, we can have K1 through K4 alphabets. First, a recap on creating a keyed alphabet. Pick the desired word or phrase. Remove any repeated letters. Append the rest of the alphabet after the keyword, minus any repeated letters. Example, our keyword is letters. Removing the repeated letters, we get L-E-T-R-S. We add the rest of the alphabet, and we're done. I've seen a few people argue that letters should be allowed to represent themselves, where S equals S, and so on. But that kind of feels sloppy to me. Also, it can make recovery of K3 keywords impossible. The Black Chamber guidelines follow the ACA guidelines. Letters should not map to themselves. Creating the K1 through K4 alphabets with keyword letters. For K1, the plain text alphabet, upper line, is keyed. The cipher alphabet is not. The cipher alphabet is shifted so that no letter maps to itself. K2, the cipher alphabet is keyed. The plain alphabet is not. K3, both alphabets are keyed with the same key.
And with K4, both alphabets are keyed, but with different keys. Here, our second keyword is sentences. Encryption is going to be the same for all alphabet types, K1 through K4. Using K2, and this is a test message, place the plaintext letter in the upper alphabet and take the ciphertext letter from the lower alphabet. T becomes Z, H becomes J, I becomes K, S becomes Y, A becomes B, E becomes G, M becomes P, and G becomes I. And that's it. Decryption. The ease or difficulty of simple substitution decryption is going to lie primarily with whether you have a keyed alphabet. If the alphabet is random, or if you have a symbolic cipher, then you'll need some kind of reference sheet or chart showing the symbol letter relationships. If you're using keyed alphabets, I suggest that you place the cipher alphabet on the top line. In ascending alphabetic order, like so. Then just read off the plaintext letters below the matching cipher letters on the top line. Z becomes T, J becomes H, K becomes I, Y becomes S, B becomes A, G becomes E, P becomes M, and I becomes G. Easy. Final notes. The last distinction for simple subs is whether you have word divisions, or in the ACA terminology, aristocrats and patristocrats. With word divisions, or aristocrats, we keep the spaces and punctuation. Some people prefer to also use an asterisk to identify proper nouns and place names. This is just a nicety to the solver to warn them the word may not be in their word lists. Using the keyed alphabet with the keyword letters and the plain text, Groucho Marx once said, who are you going to believe, me or your own eyes? The aristocrat form of the simple sub looks like this. Without word divisions, or for the patristocrat form, the spaces and punctuation are stripped out and the letters are grouped in fives. The main differences between the two types, with and without divisions, are in the approaches to solving them. Simple subs with divisions let you see word lengths and contractions. Single letter words in English are almost always A or I. Apostrophes are usually followed by T, D, S, or LL. And we can see letter patterns. That is, O, G, Z, Z, G, X has a 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4 pattern, which can represent the words ballad, begged, better, borrow, bottom, common, follow, hollow, lesser, letter, sorrow, teller, or a number of other words. This makes aristocrats relatively easier to solve than pats. However, if you're a pencil and paper solver, you're going to want to start compiling lists of pattern words. Lots of lists. Simple subs without divisions require more of an analytical approach, with letter frequency counts, digram, trigram, and quadram counts, and placing hint words, called cribs, in the message. That is, pats can be relatively harder to solve than aristos. If you're trying to solve symbolic substitutions, convert the symbols to randomly assigned letters, then solve them as simple subs without divisions and with a random key. I'll demonstrate this process in the upcoming video for James DeMille's Cipher from Cryptogram, a novel. If you want to try your hand at solving simple substitutions, I pinned a few practice scripts in the comments below. If you want to see some methods for solving simple substitution ciphers, you can join the Black Chamber on Patreon to get access to the next video when it comes out, or wait until it goes public on YouTube sometime later. That's enough for now. See you at the next drop point. Got questions, comments, or suggestions? 
leave them in the comments below. Enjoyed this video? Then I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want to show further support, you can join us over at the Black Chamber Patreon page, where you can get access to more how-to videos and PDFs on solving the cipher types covered here, additional crypts to solve, and more. Links pinned in the comments below. See you at the next drop point.